Hosted in life, we're looking at how to make a life worth of entertainment worth having. When we do these recordings and the audio casts that we have, we're trying to figure out what to do. We're also trying to figure out how to do it. And when we figure out how to do it, then we figure out what to do. But sometimes there are topics that we want to talk about, but we're not sure who will listen and who will care. But the topic of love is usually something that a lot of people are careful about. They're very thoughtful about. They don't want to muck about about it, and they want to know what in the world is love. Recently, I've been watching some incredible education on TED TV, which most people in my industry know about. It gives great authors, great uh, researchers, great scientists opportunities to speak to you and me, and it's fabulous. I was watching this one uh, European woman talk, who's a psychologist or something, talk about relationships, and it's really fabulous. And I learned a lot, but it also validated a lot of my already received thinking. So when I'm talking about these things, I'm talking about these things. When I'm thinking about these things, I'm thinking about these things, but who knows when you, the listener, are thinking about these things or wondering about these things or curious about these things, and that's not the point. The point is love is a concept, and the concept of love was gifted to us by God. And because it was gifted to us by God, we have the right to do things about love. We have the right to say, I love you. We have the right to say, I need you. We have the right to say, I want you. We have the right to say, I'm passionately, madly, crazily, and happily in love with you. But sometimes those people that we say that to aren't quite ready for it. And then you sit there and you wait for years for them to be ready for it, mature enough for it, happy enough for it, and thrilled for it, or simply spiritually okay with it. You see, some people play in those realms. They have intimate conversations about a lot of things that are typically a couple topic. And then they go, oh, I didn't actually mean any of that with you. I wasn't actually implying that I was interested in you. No, that wasn't it. I was just offering you a friendship. And you're like, bullshit. You were testing me on every grounds. And we had good relationships on, up until you started to involve people into our relationship. And then you became a clown. The clown in you started to parade the information and gossip what was going on for you and me to other people. And that's illogical. It's also highly immoral. Because they're not there in the moment of time when we're enjoying ourselves, when we're sharing each other, our ideas, our opinions, our feelings, our thoughts, our brainstorms, and that's true. But there's always something that is important to you. And what's important to you becomes important to me because of our friendship. But what's important in love is important to me and should be important to you because of our friendship. You see, the best foundation for any marriage, any coupleship, any partnership in business is, frankly, a balanced friendship. So when I talk about these things, I'm talking about reality. I'm not talking about some little fairy tale spell that works for you and works for me. I'm talking about the truth of that, the truth of love. And the truth of love is that love can be hard, love can be blind, love can be stupid, and love can be fine. But what you have to do is determine, are you in love with someone or you just like the look of them on your arm? You see, being in love with someone means that you're forgiving to that person. Being in love with someone means that you see their crap and you're okay with what they've got. But being in love with someone also means that you focus on their best qualities and try to bring those out, enhance them for your actual family, for your coupleship, for your business partnership, for whatever the part of love is that you can handle with that person. Stupid people recognize they're in love but then run off to the best looking thing they've ever had and find out later that they're a monster in their head. You see, a sound relationship is not always built on physicality like that. A sound relationship is based on two people knowing each other really thoroughly and that. So when I'm doing these audio casts, I have the right to talk about my philosophy, my perspective, the things I've read, the things I've researched on what is and isn't healthy. But the stupidity of people is thinking that they have rights to people they have no rights to. And they have to learn that about you, not at all, because who you choose to share your life with is who you choose to share your life with. But if you were spending all your time preparing to choose to share your life with someone else, and then you monkeyed that because you weren't willing to submit to God, and you weren't willing to submit that per to that person by showing yourself right in front of them, then that's the foolishness of you. The foolishness of you is that you're not thinking what it can do to a heart. You see, you can spend all that time and all that energy preparing, doing games, proving that the person is absolutely 100% right for you, and then you monkey yourself because something new comes along and entices you, invites you, and destroys everything God has for you. And then God becomes raging, and then we have things like COVID, and then it becomes more difficult to do things solidly. 
to improve things, to repair things because of you. Not always because of the other person. Because you won't forget. You won't see. You won't observe. You won't hear. You won't listen. What happened? You used to do all that. 